So even if you've never written your own decorator and have only used them, you would know decorators from the at symbol used to prefix their usage. The at symbol here, though, is little more than syntactic sugar. One can do the same thing invoking the decorator function explicitly, passing in the function to be decorated and replacing the original with the result. In fact, this is what you had to do before the decorator syntax was introduced in Python 2.4. The decorator syntax is therefore just a shorthand way of being able to apply a wrapper around an existing function, or otherwise modify the existing function in place before the definition of the function, or while the definition of the function is being set up. The more illustrative way of showing how a wrapper works is to implement it using a class object. The class instance is initialized with and remembers the original function object. When the now wrap function is called, it is actually the underscore call method of the wrapper which is invoked. This in turn would then call the original wrap function. A pass through wrapper isn't particularly useful. So normally you would actually want to do some work either before or after the wrapper function is called. Or you may want to modify the input arguments or the result as they pass through the wrapper. Using a class to implement the wrapper for a decorator isn't actually that popular. Instead, a function closure is more often used. In this case, a nested function is used as the wrapper, and it is that which is returned by the decorator function. When the now wrapped function is called, the nested function is actually being called. This, in turn, would again then call the original wrapped function. In this situation, the nested function doesn't actually get past the wrapped function explicitly, but it will still have access to it via the arguments given to the outer function call. This does away with the need to create a class to hold what was the wrap function, and that's why it is convenient and generally more popular approach. Now, when we talk about functions, we expect them to specify properties which describe them, as well as document what they do. These include the underscore name and underscore doc attributes. When we use a wrapper, though, this no longer works, as we expect, as in this case, in the case of using a function closure, closure the details of the nested function are returned. If we use a class to implement the wrapper, as class instances do not normally have a underscore name attribute, attempting to access the name of the function will actually result in an attribute, exception, attribute error exception. The solution here when using a function closure is to copy the attributes of interest from the wrap function to the nested wrapper function. This will then result in the function name and doc strings being correct. Needing to manually copy the attributes is laborious and would need to be updated if any further special attributes were added which needed to be copied. For example, we should also copy the underscore module attribute and in Python 3, the underscore qual name and underscore annotations attributes were added. To aid in getting this right, the Python standard library provides the func tools wrap s decorator which does this task for you. If using a class to implement the wrapper, instead of func tools wrap s decorator, we would use the func tools update wrapper function instead. So we've managed to fix things up so that the function name and any documentation string is correct. But what if we want to query the argument specification? This also fails, and instead of returning the argument specification for the wrapped function, it returns that of the wrapper. In the case of using a function closure, this is the nested function. The decorator is therefore not signature preserving. A worse situation again occurs with the class wrapper. This time we get an exception complaining that the wrap function isn't actually a function. As a result, it isn't possible to derive an argument specification even though the wrap function is actually still callable. Now, as well as normal functions, decorators can be also be applied to methods of classes. Python even includes a couple of special decorators called class method and static method for converting normal instance methods into these special method types. Methods of classes do provide a number of potential problems though. The first is that even if you're using func tools wrap s or func tools update wrapper in your decorator, when the decorator is applied around class method or static method, it will fail with an exception. This is because the wrappers created by these do not have some of the attributes being copied by wrap s and update wrapper. As it happens, this is actually a Python 2. Python 2 bug, and it's fixed in Python 3 by ignoring missing attributes. Even when we run it under Python 3, we still hit trouble, though. This is because both wrapper types assume that the wrapped function is directly callable. This need not actually be the case. 
a rat function can actually be what is called a descriptor, meaning that in order to get back a callable, the descriptor has to be correctly bound to the instance first. So although decorators using function closures or class wrappers may appear to solve the task at hand, they fail in various corner cases and also don't do a very good job at preserving the ability to do introspection. The latter is a problem for documentation tools, IDEs, and also some performance monitoring or profiling tools. So let's go back now and look at these descriptors, as they turn out to be a key mechanism in all of this. A descriptor is an object attribute with binding behavior, one whose attribute access has been overridden by methods in the descriptor protocol. Those methods are underscore get, underscore set, and underscore delete. If any of those methods are defined for an object, it is said to be a descriptor. What this means is, it, is that if an attribute of a class has any of these special methods, when the corresponding operation is performed on that attribute of a class, then those methods will be called instead of the default action. This allows an attribute to override how those operations are going to work. You may well be thinking that you've never made use of descriptors. But fact is that function objects are actually descriptors. When a function is originally added to a class definition, it is as a normal function. When you access that function using a dotted attribute path, you're invoking the underscore get method to bind the function to the class instance, turning it into a bound method of that object. So when calling a method of a class, it is not the underscore call method of the original function object that is called, but the underscore call method of the temporary bound object that is created as a result of accessing the function. The problem with class method was that it is dependent on the descriptor protocol being applied, as the underscore call method only exists on the result returned by underscore get when it's called. The way to solve this is for wrappers to also be descriptors. If the wrapper is applied to a normal function, the underscore call method of the wrapper is used. If the wrapper is applied to a method of a class, the underscore get method is called, which returns a new bound wrapper, and the underscore call method of that is invoked instead. This allows our wrapper to be used around descriptors as it propagates the descriptor protocol. So since using a function closure will ultimately fail if used around a decorator, which is implemented as a descriptor, the situation we therefore have is that if we want everything to work, then decorators should always use this pattern. The question now is how do we address the other issues we had? We solved naming using functals, wrapS, functals, update wrapper before. But what do they do? Well, wrapS just uses update wrapper, so we just need to look at it. I'll show you what is in Python 3.3, although that actually has an bug in it too, which is fixed in Python 3.4. Key thing to try and remember as we try and look at the body of update wrapper is what is, what is in these default variables that get passed as assigned and updated. Those in assigned are what we were originally manually assigning, plus some extras. The dict in updates is something new though, so we need to see what is happening with it. Looking at the body of the function, three things are being done. First off, a reference to the wrapped function is saved as underscore wrapped. This is the bug, as it actually should be done last. The second is to copy those attributes such as underscore name and underscore doc. Finally, the third thing is to copy the contents of dict from the wrapped function into the wrapper, which could actually result in quite a lot of objects needing to be copied. If we're using a function closure or a straight class wrapper, this copying is able to be done at the point that the decorator is applied. With the wrapper being a descriptor though, it technically now also needs to be done in the bound wrapper. As the bound wrapper is created every time the wrapper is called for a function bound to a class, this is going to be too slow. We need a more performant way of handling this. The solution is what's called an object proxy. This is a special wrapper class which looks and behaves like what, behaves like what it wraps. It is a complicated beast in its own right, so I'm actually going to gloss over the details for this one. In short though, it copies limited attributes from the wrapped object to itself, and otherwise it uses special methods, properties, and underscore get getatter to fetch attributes from the wrapped object only when required. What we now do is derive our wrapper class from the object proxy, 
Doing so, attributes like done underscore name and done underscore doc, when queried from the wrapper, return the values from the wrapped function instead. Calls like inspect get argspec and inspect get source will also work and return what we expect. So we have a pattern now for implementing a decorator that appears to work correctly, but needing to do all of that each time is more work than we really want. What we can do therefore is create a decorator to help us create decorators. This would reduce the code we need to write for each decorator to a single function as shown. What would this decorator factory need to look like? As it turns out, our decorator factory is quite simple and isn't really much different to using a partial combining our new wrapper function argument from the decorator when it is defined with the wrapped function when the decorator is used and passing them into our new wrapper object, new function wrapper object. The done underscore call method of our function wrapper for when the wrapper is used around a normal function now just calls the decorator wrapper function with the wrapped function in arguments, leaving the calling of the wrapped function up to the decorator wrapper function. In the case we're binding a function, the wrapper is also passed to the bound wrapper. The bound wrapper is more or less the same, with the underscore call method delegating to the decorator wrapper function. So we can make creating decorators easier using a factory. So let's see now what other problems we can find. The first such issue is creating decorators that can work on both normal functions and instance methods of classes. Changing our decorator to print out the prags pass for a normal function, we obviously just get a tuple of the two arguments. Do the same for an instance method and the result is the same. The problem here is what if the decorator wanted to know what the actual instance of the class was? We have lost that information when the function was bound to the class, as it is now associated with the wrapped function passed in, rather than the argument list. To solve this problem, we can remember what the instance was that was passed into the underscore get method when it was called to bind the function. This can then be passed through to the bound wrapper when it is created. In the bound wrapper, the instance pointer can then be passed through to the decorator function as an extra argument. You may have missed it, but to be uniform for the case of a normal function in the top level wrapper, we pass none for this new instance argument. This then allows us to be able to distinguish between a normal function call and an instance method call within the one decorator wrapper function. The reference to the instance is even passed separately so we don't have to juggle with the arguments to move it out of the way for an instance method. Unfortunately we aren't done though, as when calling an instance method via the class, passing in the instance as an argument, the instance passed to the decorator wrapper function is none. Instead, the reference to the instance gets passed through as the first argument. To deal with this variation, we can check for instance being none before calling the decorator wrapper function and pop the instance off the start of the argument list. We can then use a partial to bind the instance to the wrapped function ourselves and call the decorator wrapper function. We then get the same result no matter whether the instance method is called via the class or not. This fiddle does though upset things for when we have a class method, also causing the same issue for a static method. In both those cases, the instance is also passed as none. The result is that the real first argument ends up as the instance, which is obviously going to be quite wrong. We can handle that in the top level wrapper by looking at the type of the wrapped function prior to doing binding. If it is a class method or static method, then we know enough, anything else is likely to be an instance method. For a class or static method, we use the original bound wrapper function before I introduce the fiddle and move the fiddle into a version of the wrapper specifically for instance methods. We're still not quite there yet. The argument list is right again, but the instance is still none. For a static method, this is probably quite reasonable since it isn't really much different to a normal function. For a class method, it would be nice for the instance to actually be the class type corresponding to the initial class argument for the class method. The big question is whether there is another way of getting this. Turns out there is a way of still getting the class, the class method is bound to. This is by accessing the underscore self attribute of the bound function. We therefore ignore the instance the underscore get method was passed and use this underscore self attribute instead. Success, 
Finally, we now have the instance argument for an instance method being the instance of the class. For a class method is the class itself. And for a normal function, the instance is none. We have one more situation to consider though. That is where we want to decorate a class. What happens then? In this case, the instance is still none. So from that, we cannot distinguish it from a normal function. If we also look at the wrap function though, we will see that it is a class type, whereas it would be a function in the case of a normal function being called. This works out okay though, because we can look at the type of what is being wrapped in that case. This means that we, can now we now have the ability to create a universal decorator. That is, a decorator that can determine what it is wrapping. This does away with the need to create separate decorators for functions and instance methods, which would otherwise do the same thing. Now the decorators so far did not allow arguments to, to be supplied when being applied to a function. If arguments to the decorator re are required, the decorator definition can be nested within a function to create a function closure. When the outer decorator factory function is used, it returns the inner decorator function. Positional keyword arguments can be used, but keyword arguments are possibly a better convention. If arguments have default values, the outer decorator function would take the wrap function as the first argument, with none as a default. The decorator arguments follow. Decorator arguments would now be passed as keyword arguments. On the first call, wrapped will be none, and a partial is used to return the decorator factory again. On the second call, wrapped is passed, and this time it is wrapped using the decorator. Because we have default arguments though, we don't actually need to pass the arguments in which case the decorator factory is applied direct to the function being decorated. Because wrapped is not none when passed in, the decorator is wrapped around the function immediately, skipping the return of the factory a second time. Now why I said a convention of having keyword arguments is preferable is that Python 3 allows you to enforce it using the new keyword only argument syntax. This way you avoid the problem of someone passing in a decorator argument as a positional argument for wrapped. For consistency, keyword only arguments can also be enforced for required arguments, even though it isn't strictly necessary. The final result is that we now have a means of creating decorators that preserves the function name, documentation strings, argument specifications, and even retrieving of source code. One decorator can be used on classes, functions, instance methods, and class methods if necessary. It is also easy to support decorator arguments even allowing them to be optional if desired. So as you probably already knew, decorators are a quite simple concept, or at least I should say that they can be made to be simple to use. The actual work involved in getting to work properly is a lot more. Rather than replicate all of what I've discussed, I've created a package that bundles up all of this magic. The package is called Wrapped. I released it just yesterday, version one, and you can find source code on GitHub and install it from PyPy. And documentation also on uh, Read the Docs. <laughs>